Summertime scriptures and songs. Our instrumental starter background. Feel the summer. new at Bethesda. Each week we have a bulletin prepared lovingly and carefully by Marie and uh, this week like other weeks there are uh, stories of faith and friendship uh, that uh, we encourage you to take in and enjoy and be blessed by. Also there is notification of uh, council considering a draft proposal about a return to gathered worship as this pandemic wears on and uh, the need for uh, regathered worship at beautiful Bethesda becomes more and more apparent and more deeply felt uh, by many. Uh, also in the bulletin is, is our liturgy, uh, so please uh, bring it up on whatever device you're using or, or print it, that's, that's my preference, uh, to follow along as we worship God together now. Uh, let us hear uh, the call to worship. Lord God, you call us to come, to be blessed by the movement the breezes of your spirit. You come and have asked us to be blessed by the light and the warmth of your love. You have asked us to be blessed in the life-giving watering of uh, your love. And so today, uh, may your winds direct us to be encountered by the Spirit, the Spirit of God the Father and God the Son, who directs and molds and gives, gives life. Come, now is the time to worship. So again, if you have your opening prayer, if you have the bulletin with the opening prayer, let us pray together, wherever we are this morning. Your spirit, God, works in our weakness until we are aflame with your love and power. Fill the hearts of your faithful with living fire that we may set the world ablaze through Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and power, praise forever. Amen. And our opening, gathering him this morning, from Voices United, reflecting the faith-driven reflections on wind and spirit, number 202, O breath of life, come sweeping into our lives, into our church, into our soul-crafted experience this morning. Well, welcome to Bethesda the Link, Soul Crafted, a worship experience. We're so glad you've come along. So this morning at Soul Crafted, we do an examination, a reflection on 
summer breezes. This is the third in our series of looking at the summertime world around us and what that says about our faith and conversely how our faith draws on these elements of nature and in, to some degree summertime nature to build, encourage, grow, shape, mold, and move our faith forward. We began with an examination of summertime warmth, the sun, a beautiful sunny day. As the Lighthouse song declares, sunny days, they help you feel fine. From there, we looked at the warmth, the light, the life-giving light and warmth of God. Then last week, we looked at summertime rain, a gentle, life-giving rain, giving life to the earth, giving refreshment and, and produce and needed food, and how in the scriptures, water is such a dominant image of the life-giving graces and love of God to our lives, to our relationships. And in both cases, we considered how there is that intersection between spirit and faith and the created world and our responsibility to care and nurture the created world. Well, this morning we turn to the third of these summertime experiences of nature and faith as we turn to summertime wind. You might remember last week when looking for a song to set the, the tone and the texture for water, I thought for sure there was a, an old Seals and Crofts song that talked about the summer rain making you feel fine. Well, as I said, it turns out I had it wrong. The song is Summer Breeze, and the lyric is, Summer Breeze Help You Feel Fine, blowing through the jasmine in my mind. As you listen to this song, know that jasmine is a summer blooming flower, and the intention of Seals and Cross was to present a, a prosaic uh, lyric and song of a picture of a person coming home in the evening, feeling the summer breeze, hearing his dog bark. Uh, it was actually a bit deeper than that. They happened to be uh, people of faith, and they felt it was important to, do, to share a song uh, in which the simple pleasures of life are seen as not so simple but rather as things to be enjoyed as gifts of the Creator. So, uh, moving on into Soulcrafted Today, Summer Breeze by Seals and Crofts. May the wind of the Spirit blow through your mind and imagination as you take in this texture-producing song. Shining through the window Let me know everything's alright Summer breeze Makes me feel fine Blowing through the jasmine in my mind Summer breeze Makes me feel fine Blowing through the jasmine in my mind The paper laying on the sidewalk A little music from the house next door So I walk on up to the doorstep Through the screen and across the floor Ooh. Summer breeze Makes me feel fine Going through the jasmine in my mind Days of summer, the jasmine's in bloom. July is dressed up and playing her tune. And I come home from a hard day's work. Feel 
the arms that reach out to hold me in the evening when the day is through. Summer breeze makes me feel fine, blowing through the jazz in my mind. this morning. Number 200 in Voices United, shared here by Rebecca. O Holy Spirit, by whose breath, O Holy Spirit, by whose breath, life risen vibrant out of death, come to create, renew, inspire, come kindle in your heart, in our hearts, your fire. In your God's energy is shown. In you, mutual love, our hearts unite. Your power the whole creation fills. Can confirm our weak, uncertain wills. Praise to God, to Christ the Word, and to the Spirit, all adored. Sing along if it is safe to do so. Read along. Pray along. Share along. Spirit of God. And to launch us this morning from uh, John O'Donohue's book, The Four Elements, this reflection on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also the spirit of excitement, the spirit of creativity. The Spirit conveys the signature and secret shape of our own souls to us. It is here, O'Donohue says, that the imprint of every human is to be found here at the heart of the Trinity. It is out of this source that the idea of us emerged. The Holy Spirit is the immediacy and breath of God. The Holy Spirit is belonging and all begonning in connection is an activity of the power and the presence of the wind of the Spirit, the Spirit God. We all breathe the same air, 
Air is the medium of interflow between all people. It is also the medium of interflow between person and nature. All plants breathe in the air in the way the planet, plant kingdom absorbs the ethos and atmosphere of the planet. There is spirit in air and the wind. And as we look at the, the wind of God this morning, perhaps we have extra sensitivity and extra care to reflect with uh, a keen eye and a keen heart, a ready eye and a ready heart. As uh, we know the, that the winds of God, the air that we breathe, is air that is sometimes challenging air, air that is not the air that it needs to be, air that sometimes uh, carries uh, viruses or carries pollutants. But air is the wind of God. It's pure. It's refreshing. It's the breath of the life-giving wind of God. Let us enter into our scriptures, our reflections, our manifestations of the winds of God. O Lord, may your living spirit bring life, breath, ruach, wisdom in the reading, in the reflecting, and the imaging of your word now. Amen. Our first scripture reading on this summertime reflection on the element of wind, of summertime breeze, comes from the book of Genesis. Again, a book of beginnings, a book of understandings, a book of what it means to be human. From Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, And the Lord God formed humankind of the dust of the earth and breathed into him the gift of life, the spirit. And also from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophecy son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord, Come for winds, O breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And so in scripture, the spirit, the wind of God, is identified, is correlated with the gift of life, the unique quality of humanity, bearing the image of God, bearing the capacity to choose in consciousness and to relate. It is that wind of God, that spirit of God, that calls us to relate to God, creation, and each other with a sense of familiarity, with a sense of the possibility of intimacy, with a sense of the energy of love in the person of the Trinity. God the Father is the one who loves the world and humankind. God the Son is the one who incarnates and who makes that love shown, tangible, as it says uh, in the scriptures, and the word was made flesh. And that spirit of God is the energy, the love of the wind of God, bringing into life God consciousness and all breezes that bring life. These illustrations of the wind bringing the gifts of God in creation and in spiritual life. First, this image, a summertime breeze, a summertime breezy memory of the gift of God, the breath of God of life. I recall uh, kite flying with our daughters, Lauren and Meg, on a hillside on a summer day. The breath of God, the wind of God, the life of God in the giftedness of our daughters, of wind, of a summer day, of a kite flying, being caught on the winds, the breath of God, like we are invited to also be caught within the spirit and life-giving presence of God. Another manifestation of the gentle wind of God, spirit of breath of God in creation, in summertime memory, in thankfulness and a spiritual moment. Just recently, the winds of God invisible, yet causing the flowing of Lake Erie on Port Dover Beach, the giftedness of the gentle wind and spirit of God. Our next scripture reading from the book of Acts chapter two. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Many of you will remember from Sunday school, from Pentecost sermons, from teachings received, 
that the church is born at Pentecost and the church is born, yes, in flame, but also wind. The gentle wind of the spirit and the swiftly blowing wind, the birth of the church at Pentecost. And that church continues to be informed and shaped and molded by the blowing currents of the wind. Well, you may have this sign indicative of this Pentecostal church. Well, United Church, but Pentecostal in that all churches are born of the Spirit in the lineage of that first church in Acts, born through the blowing winds and fire of the Spirit, carrying us forward through, uh, through becoming a Constantinian state church, through the Reformation, through pioneer churches, and now our Bethesda, the Link Church, posed and proposing viability, ongoing growth, one of which is meeting the real needs of our immediate neighbors, one of which is parking. And so Cheryl and I were meeting to discuss uh, how to best manage this, uh, this service, this ministry, and this financial resource. While we were there in the beautiful link, a fellow came along, as many people do, uh, using the link, uh, being directed and blown in by inclination, by need. This individual, Gary, went on to share in a lengthy conversation, again, in my way of looking at things directed by the Spirit, blown in by the wind of God. He went in to share his struggles with quarantine. He went on to say that uh, he is on his way to see family in Brantford. He lives in Toronto and was drawn into uh, our beautiful Bethesda. And he noticed it said a healing garden and shared with me when he found out that I was a minister, his need for healing. And so uh, uh, the spirit, I believe, led us to listen to him, uh, listen to him closely. I outlined the nature of the garden. He took uh, an invitational uh, print out to know when our church gathers both online and, and perhaps later in September but mostly to me an indication of if we're hearts and minds and perhaps our lungs are alert to it we can breathe in breaths and movements of God coming into our spheres of influence coming into our connecting as the spirit of God connects with us as the Spirit of God connected and led Gary to have that little bit of a gospel conversation. Some of you maybe hopefully are thinking, hmm, I've seen that postcard before. Well, it has been featured in our bulletin the last few weeks. They were designed and produced uh, and donated by Anna. And this past week, they were shared to our new neighbors uh, along Garner Road. Part of the wind blowing in the summertime, growth and push towards greater impact, influence and reach of Bethesda the Link. While we were delivering these postcards, as I've done in other churches, it wasn't unusual to have two, again, summertime spirit wind encounters. One, Janet experienced as a wind of the spirit. She was going up to one of our neighboring townhouses. The owner pulled up in a car, jumped out, and looked at Janet very questioningly, very ill at ease. And Janet, well, being Janet, our, our love convener, explained who she was, what she was doing, and the person, instead of her initial conversation, which was, what would you like and what are you doing here? Her body language and her demeanor, her tone shifted, and she received the postcard and said, Oh, thank you. Where is Bethesda again? Just across the street, Janet answered. A wind of the Spirit, a connecting breath of God, from our new neighbor to Janet, and perhaps to us, but at least at that moment, a breath of God a spirit of God, positive connection, bringing possibility and potential. The second such summertime wind, but also 
Pentecost, birth and growth and connecting of the church encounter was myself. I too was walking down a row of our new neighbors and condos, and there was a couple in a garage at the next house over. I asked them if they would if they would like me to place it in into their door or uh, to which they said, no, just bring it over. And then ensued a conversation with uh, Darren and Helena, two uh, nurses, one working shift, one working for a company. They must have felt, felt uh, at ease uh, because Helena said, yeah, he thinks I'm the I'm the cushy shift. I'm the cushy uh, uh, office worker. And he said, yeah, and I have to work 12 hour shifts. In any case, a conversation ensued. They said they were at, over at the link often with their children and their dogs. They wanted to know when we might be reopening. I said that, that emotions coming before council. They wanted to know a little bit about Bethesda. And uh, they were glad to have a conversation, an invitation, a spirit connection, a wind connection, which, of course, raises for us, for all of us, have we experienced these kind of connections where the spirit brought us into communication in connection with the breath with someone else? I would encourage all of the uh, participants who have come along to uh, Soulcrafted this morning to think back in this summertime of, of breezes, of, of wind blowing connections with someone else, perhaps discovering new information, perhaps, perhaps making a new contact, perhaps simply. If you think back and reflect a connection that really was, however significant or seemingly insignificant it may have been, that it truly was a spirit wind connection, bringing life, bringing breath. And of course, that same question applies to thinking back to my other two images of the kite and the Port Dover beach and times where the wind and breath of God brought us into closer contact with our created reality and occasions for giving thanks for that breath and wind of God. And finally, with this image, there is the invitation to us all to consider where the wind and breath and Pentecost spirit of God is leading Bethesda the link to make intentional connections and invitations to grow not just in viability, but in harmony with our community partners with the United Church to continuing to love in ever widening circle of love, in ever widening circles of love, as our mission statement declares. Now, a few more images and scriptures and manifestations of the wind spirit of God in summertime and all times. Our next scripture reading, reflecting for us today, the next movement and direction and gusty wind of the Spirit. Jonah chapter 1. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgments against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, caused a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. And the story goes on to tell that the sailors, casting their lots with their gods, were directed to cast Jonah off of the ship. And there, of course, is the well-known mythological in part story of Jonah being followed by the fish, of being deposited on the land, and Jonah eventually coming to realize that God's breath and life and care extended to Nineveh, even though Jonah couldn't see it. So the point of this windy story is that the breath and wind of God also can be more than gentle, more than breezy, can bring needed, even unlooked for, even unwanted, 
change in directions for yes the messengers of god in the case of jonah and the church winds of change google that in the church and you'll see way more than you can handle for jonah the point was he needed to attune himself to god's inclusive love he needed to attune himself to the including breath blowing spirit of god and so must we paul the apostle experienced a similar redirecting and reconfiguring by the breath spirit of god in this next scripture reading from the book of acts Acts chapter 16. Paul and those with him went through the areas of Phrygia and Galatia, since the Holy Spirit did not let them preach the good news in Asia. When they came near the country of Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not let them. So they passed by Mysia and went to Troas. That night Paul, Paul saw in a vision a man from Macedonia the man stood and begged, come over to Macedonia and help us. We left Troas and sailed straight to the island of Samothrace. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. The word of the spirit, directing, leading, prompting, dire directing in the sense of not permitting this way, but insisting going that way. And so they boarded a ship on their way to following God's call. They had further troubled waters, a further disturbing wind of God as the ship sunk and Paul ended up preaching to those who were captaining the ship. And so the Spirit of God does direct and lead the church sometimes in troubled waters, the troubled waters of gender inclusive, inclusivity, the troubled waters blown by the Spirit of coming to terms with the deaths of indigenous children, the troubled waters of a previous generation of realizing that a human person is a human person no matter what their color. And so slavery is, so to speak, on the very face of it, wrong and a heresy. And so the Spirit of God continues to lead the church, to direct the church, to cause the church to trim its sails, to discover where the winds of the Spirit are blowing and leading, and where we are called to follow. Two more images bringing us to an end for at least this time of our journey with the Spirit who is freedom. And this reading and reflection from Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth Chapter 3, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So much, so much Spirit, so much wind, so much breath in so few, few words. So, where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the wind of God is, there is freedom. Another translation simply says, the Spirit is is freedom and so the spirit of god the wind of god the breeze of god is closely correlated with freedom freedom it must be understood in scripture at least in short form is freedom to do justice and walk humbly freedom to love each person as god has loved them in christ freedom to be pro creation to be pro life in all its givenness pro inclusion pro justice pro liberation to become all that god has intended to come and so you see freedom in the bible is not simply pure volition in fact paul struggles with with his choices saying he sometimes choose that which he shouldn't choose 
And the choices of God's people in the Old Testament not only got them in the hot water, it got them distributed and, and taken into captivity because their freedom, their so-called choices, were not to choose God, not to choose the way of justice and love and faith and Yahweh, but to choose the ways of, of captivity, capturing others and being captive themselves to false ideologies, false faiths, faiths which demeaned the person, the presence, and the people of God. And so freedom, freedom in Christ is freedom to become the image bearers of God. The next verse after this verse says, we are being changed and will be changed into Christ's glory to be like him, to be like Christ who is love, who is inc inclusivity, who is the very person and love of God, ever reaching and in the spirit, ever calling us into true freedom, the freedom for the spirit to enact with our freedom, the purposes of God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, the purposes of God to bring about the fullness of beauty and creation in us, in Bethesda the Link, in our community partners, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in our country now facing an election, in every person, in every place where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom to become the very image and reflection of all things good, beautiful, and true. In other words, of God, that's where the winds of the Spirit are leading. And so summertime breezes, recollecting that we pause to think about the createdness of God, the God's gift of summer by, summertime breezes and moments. And I hope you've had memories to relish. We've paused to consider how it is that uh, summertime breezes can also mean reflecting the birth of the church and our own trajectory as Bethesda the Link, decisions and actions of invitation. We stop to consider the Spirit of the Lord driving Jonah and driving Paul into those realms of the freedom of the Spirit. And so, in summertime breezes, in summertime scriptures, may God the Spirit so work so purpose himself with our spirits that we know we inhabit, we realize, and we function within the freedom of the Spirit of God. Amen. Thanks be to God for summertime breezes and for the Spirit who doesn't cease to lead and change even us, even you and I. Amen and Amen. Our hymn of response this morning from Voices United. Wind who makes all winds that blow. Wind who makes all winds that blow. Gusts that bend the saplings low. Gales that heave the sea in waves. Stirrings in the mind's deep caves. Aim your breath. Steady power on your church, this day, this hour. Raise, renew, the life we've lost, Spirit of God, a Pentecost. Please share in this hymn.
us pray. Lord God, we thank you for these gifts that have been given as you move by your spirit to nurture and supply uh, the needs for Bethesda the Link to be a vibrant and vital and viable faith community. May you also uh, blow through uh, these gifts to uh, enable them to be used for the building up and the strengthening of our ministries of connection and worship and love and outreach and justice through our own connections, through our Bethesda Link connections, through our United Church connections, through our community partner connections, and through all those things that anyone listening today does in connecting, in sharing, in walking humbly, in doing justice, that brings things good and beautiful and true. May your spirit continue to move us, and shape us, and direct us along these paths. And to that end, we thank you for these gifts. Amen. And we continue this morning in our pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Our Bethesda 40-day prayer list, Jesus, Moses, Noah, Jonah, the people of Israel, the pre-Pentecost church, all experienced a time of intentional prayer and spirit movement for a period of 40 days or a derivation of that number 40. We are following that pattern and praying this morning for Millgrove United Church that your spirit would blow in the midst of that church, that community of faith, those people of God. Move them into directions that you need them to go to bring your kingdom in more wholeness. And we continue in our prayer list and our morning prayers in a summer prayer, sharing together. Holy God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ born amidst the growing earth, spirit of life, wind over the flowing waters, in earth, sea, and sky, you are there. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul behind all souls, in everything we touch, in every one we meet, your presence is round us, and we give you thanks. When we have not touched but trampled you in creation, when we have not met but missed you in one another, forgive us and hear now our plea for mercy. The creator of the world watches over us in our waking and sleeping. Christ teaches us how to die out of love. The spirit of the world dwells within us to guide us and keep us safe. The God of love and mercy grant us the grace of pardon, wholeness, and peace through Jesus Christ. Amen. And this pastoral prayer, that the calming, refreshing, and peace-giving spirit of God would be felt discernibly and helpfully to those in our Bethesda the Link community of faith currently dealing with the impact of illness on themselves or beloved family members. And we add to this prayer that that movement of the Spirit bringing peace and help might be felt by all those who suffer or who have loved ones who are suffering or searching or struggling this day. And these things, these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our living and Spirit-giving Lord. Amen. The Offertory by Church Musician Rebecca Lim.
and are sending him this morning, like the murmur of the dove song, like the murmur of the dove song, like the challenge of her flight, like the vigor of the wind's rush, like the new flame's eager might, come, Holy Spirit, come. Sending prayer. God, Holy Spirit, come to us, come among us, come as the wind and cleanse, come as the fire and burn, come as the dew and refresh, convict, convert, and consecrate hearts and lives to your great good and our greater glory. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the flowing peace of the Spirit be on you and through you, now and always. Amen. So thank you for coming along. Next week we gather at Soulcrafted to uh, conclude our Summertime Faith Reflection Series as we look at summertime nights and this quiet, discernible Spirit of God. Please come along. And have a blessed week moving in the winds of the Spirit. Bye for now.